Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're looking at yet another model. We've got a WPL tracked vehicle, otherwise known as the E1. The plan this week was to work on the Tamiya trailer conversion, but time has been a bit tight. It got to Friday without having recorded anything, and then the postman dropped this off. Quite handy for a quick video. I know I'm a bit late to the E1 party, but I really didn't have a spot in the fleet for a small tracked vehicle. Until recently, that is. Anyway, in the box you get some instructions, mostly concerning all the little accessory parts, a bit on charging I should think, and probably powering the vehicle up. But I'm going to go with it should be plug and play. In the end, it's a nice quality toy RC, so it should be super easy to get going. Alright, this is the accessories bag, which we'll go through in a bit. Then we have the transmitter. It's the usual basic WPL. Way better than the first ones, but still really plasticky and a bit wobbly. But for the price, it's probably better than you might expect. And now for the main event, the tracked vehicle itself. Which is a bit of a mouthful, so I think I'm just going to call it a tank. I know it's not really a tank, but it's a lot less work to say. In the battery bay, we find a little 600 milliamp hour lithium pack. It's got a separate power and balance connector, which is nice, but otherwise it's just enough to get the thing up and running. The transmitter has a screw to attach the battery cover to make it difficult to eat the batteries. Once the screw is removed, it just takes two double A's. On the tank, we need to open the battery bay lid and plug in its battery. Then we turn on the transmitter and the tank, and it should just work. But I found if you start by just pulling the trigger, not much happens, which was a bit disappointing. The lights on the tank and transmitter were still flashing, so they're not connected. Then on a whim, I tried the steering, and it burst into life. No doubt there's something about that in the instructions, but who's got time to read them? Anyway, on the smooth surface of the white box, it's running rather nicely. Nice and smooth. Okay, here's the accessories bag. There's quite a few bits to clip on to complete the tank. First out are the WPL stickers. Not sure if you're going to use them, but it's nice to have, I guess, all the same. We've got the charger, which is your typical USB charger. It'll just plug into the battery and a USB port, and it'll have a green LED or something to say when it's full. Quite simple. Then for some reason, we've got the parts tree, despite all the parts being loose in the bag. I suppose it might be useful if we need to weld some plastic, we've got some that matches the tank. They've included a small screwdriver, which I guess is mainly so you can remove the screw that attaches the battery cover on the transmitter. Not hugely useful, except for those who maybe don't have tools on a Christmas or birthday morning, I can imagine it would be a bit of a lifesaver. That leaves the pile of small parts, which I'll separate out. We've got some wheel covers, mesh guards, fans, doors, exhausts, plus lots of other small bits and bobs. It remains to be seen how good the fit is, but I've seen the improvements with each new model from WPL. I should think they'll all fit together well enough. I'm not going to put it all together just yet though. I'm planning on a few mods and lots of paint, so we'll assemble it all later. But I'm quite pleased with what I see. And now, just for fun, here's the tank next to a Heng Long 116th Tiger 1. I'm not sure exactly how they'd compare if they were full size, but I do think the WPL is a little bit on the small side. Not by a huge amount though. What's odd is if we compare it to a WPL C44, which is also supposed to be 116th, there's definitely something a bit amiss with the scale. But that's pretty typical in the RC world. It would be nice if everything was carefully sized up, but more often than not, I think they use whatever scale is popular on the box and not worry about the actual dimensions. Right, back to the tank. And if we lift off the white cover at the back, we see a cavernous void of a storage box, way bigger than the battery bay. With a little bit of tinkering, we could easily fit a larger lithium polymer pack. This one's 850 milliamp hour rather than a stock 600. Even so, you could still lose it in the box. If we push it a bit with a 2200 milliamp hour lipo, it'll still comfortably fit in the space with some to spare. So if we were to load the tank up with some extra electronics, it would be easy to have enough battery to run for a good long time. Which brings us on to why I decided to add the tank to the fleet. 
I've been fiddling around with my FPV headsets, which one isn't too important. On the side, under the tape, we can just about make out an Arduino 33BLE. Here's a stock photo of one, so you know what you're looking at. It's basically a little processor with Bluetooth, and more importantly, a fairly good IMU, Inertial Measurement Unit. Or, to be more exact, it's got a three-axis accelerometer, gyro, and magnetometer, which makes it very good at sensing movement. Add to that a rather nice bit of software, and you've got yourself a head tracker. Again, I'm a bit late to the party. There's a channel, Painless360, that has a very nice video covering the project in more detail. I'll put a link to that in the description. But in essence, all it takes is a button and a lead to a transmitter and some power, and you're good to go. You do need a fairly nice transmitter though. It needs to be able to use the body box input for channel inputs. More or less anything with OpenTX or EdgeTX will work though. If we connect the Arduino up to a USB power bank for power and connect the buddy lead to the top of the transmitter, we can see what's happening. Going into the channel monitor, we can look at channels 7 and 8. If we move the headset, you can see the channels move with it. The system will also do roll along with the pan and the tilt. We just need to add a camera gimbal and a 5.8 GHz transmitter to the tank. Something like this, except of course this one's for a Durafly Tundra. Mount it to the tank somewhere, and we've got a super immersive ground-based FPV system, with the maneuverability of a tank to get out of awkward situations. The plan is to paint it bright red, add some flashing lights for visibility, swap out the electronics for hobby grade to add some extra smoothness and of course range, and then we can design a three axis gimbal with a camera and transmitter. It's mostly going to be used indoors around the 114th Tamiya trucks, so a lot of the niggles I've seen with the tracks popping off aren't too much of a concern. I think it's going to be the ideal little platform. Right, well, that's it for this week then. Sorry it was a bit rushed, but that's how it goes sometimes. Yet another new project. As always, thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys.